The year is 2020. The ninth console generation is fast approaching, and Forza Horizon 5 is well on its way to blowing the minds of players around the world. Or at least, that's what should be happening. Starting with the first Horizon in 2012, the Forza franchise has had a new release annually, alternating like clockwork between Motorsport and Horizon games. But in 2019, Turn 10 Studios announced that they were breaking from this rhythmic release schedule, and with Forza Motorsport 8 unlikely to release for at least another year, Forza Horizon 5 probably isn't going to be released until 2022 at the earliest. While this release gap may disappoint longtime fans, 2020 is still an important year for the open world series. Besides the fact that Forza Horizon 4 continues to grow with regular free content updates, the year also represents the fourth anniversary of Forza Horizon 3. A fourth anniversary may seem like an odd place to reflect upon a game's release, but Horizon 3, like all Forza games, has a four-year limited licensing agreement with the car manufacturers included in the game. As a result, the game's looming fourth anniversary represents the last chance to purchase the game and its DLC before both are removed from digital storefronts. This ending of the game's life cycle, beyond just being a last chance to snag that sweet Hot Wheels expansion, is also an important point to reflect on the game itself and what made it so significant. After all, hindsight is 2020. In this video, we'll review the third installment in the Horizon series, analyzing all the things that made it so special, not just for the series, but for open world racing games as a whole. Let's take a look at Forza Horizon 3, four years later. In order to fully comprehend what makes Horizon 3 such a special open-world racer, we must first understand what makes it a Horizon game. While the game itself has been praised for its novel modifications to the Forza formula, it is also fantastic for the qualities it left unchanged, and these mainstay features are both foundational to the Horizon series and to Horizon 3's impact on both the franchise and open-world racers as a whole. As the more relaxed open-world offshoot of the Forza Motorsport franchise, the Horizon series is defined by the relationship it creates between the driving environment and the driving physics used to maneuver around it. As in all entries in the series, the open world in Horizon 3 is fantastically balanced. The collection of dirt trails and asphalt roadways that form the game's open world is incredibly diverse, ranging from massive straights to tight hairpins to winding S's, from flat expanses to undulating terrain to off-camber corners. This variety is highlighted by its dispersal. Rather than having each type of driving terrain sectioned off into specific quadrants of the world, the game spreads these various streets and trails around the entire map, intermingling and combining multiple surface types and path varieties with one another. This cross-pollination of terrain ensures that the world as a whole is always an engaging place to drive, constantly encouraging experimentation and spontaneity on the part of the player. That said, the roads of a racing game are only as engaging as the gameplay allows them to be, and Horizon 3, by maintaining the nuanced driving physics established by its predecessors, provides a behind-the-wheel experience that perfectly complements the game's open world. Just like the game's roadways, the key word for the driving in Horizon 3 is balance. Like all other games in the series, Horizon 3 succeeds at walking a delicate tightrope between a realistic driving game and a cartoonish arcade racer. Using the physics of Forza Motorsport games as its base, Horizon 3 implements realistic racing factors like tire deformation, load transfer, and grip into the driving experience, but softens their impact slightly compared to its more true-to-life sister series, allowing players to traverse the world with a greater sense of speed and control. Similarly, other factors, like curves and bushes, have far less stopping power than their real-life counterparts, and combined with the softened motorsport physics, the driving experience that used to be laser-focused upon exacting precision and micro-adjustments is now more focused upon confident, fast-paced fun. Further encouraging this more brash approach to driving is the implementation of the skills system. Another Horizon mainstay, 
This system takes note of the player's feats of skill and daring driving, along with their ability to chain these accomplishments together in a driving line, rewarding them with in-game progression. By providing this reward, this system acts as play conditioning, encouraging players to indulge in the fast and loose approach to driving for which the gameplay is tailored, while also validating the primary appeal of open-world racers. The simple act of unstructured, spontaneous driving around the map. While all of these features make Horizon 3 a wonderful game to play, none of them are unique to this specific title. Each game in the Horizon series has had these features, and while Horizon 3 is already spectacular as just another Horizon game with more content, the game as a whole is so much more. Forza Horizon 3 is both a uniquely special Horizon game and one of the best racers ever because it builds so significantly upon the foundation left by its predecessors that it drastically improves the open world racing experience while simultaneously changing the core relationship the player has with the game itself. Horizon 3 has a huge number of new features compared to its predecessors, chief among which is the game's open world. Unlike in prior games that focused on a specific country or state, Horizon 3's open world is a loving homage to the entire continent of Australia, allowing the game to portray a wider variety of different environments than any Horizon game before. Players are treated to dry outback with sparse foliage, coastal towns with trendy boutiques, stretches of desert covered in sand dunes, flower-filled prairies and fenced-off farmland, shipwreck-covered beaches, densely packed tropical jungle, and ultra-modern cityscapes with metro lines and monorails. This environmental diversity is enhanced with the addition of beauty spots at specific in-game locations, allowing players to get a better look at some of the majestic landmarks that make up Horizon Australia. These improvements, along with the return of the dynamic weather system, a photography-based recreation of the ever-changing Australian sky, and the new ability to drive through bodies of water, combined to create the most varied and engaging open world of any Horizon game. Besides the diversity of the world itself, Horizon 3 further engages players by adding more things to do in that world. Danger signs challenge players to take flight and get as much airtime as possible, while drift zones challenge players to get as sideways as possible while snaking through winding roads. Along with providing new activities for players to complete, these new challenges also add greater dimension to open-world gameplay. By encouraging players to challenge themselves in new ways while acknowledging impressive feats of stunt driving with star ratings and in-game experience, Danger Signs and Drift Zones provide a more comprehensive selection of spontaneous gameplay opportunities while also incentivizing achievement in areas other than fast driving. Additionally, Horizon 3 provides a new outlet for players to interact with both other people and non-player characters in the form of the new Convoy system. With the click of a button, the player can invite other people in multiplayer and NPCs in single player to drive together with them as a posse, looking for surprises in the open world like undiscovered barn finds and engaging in on-the-fly, point-to-point races. These point-to-point -point races are particularly fantastic, recreating the simple fun of racing a friend at the drinking fountain in grade school. By allowing the player to directly interact with multiple drivers without having to be in a formal race, convoys provide a fantastic new way to experience the open world, adding depth to the relationship players have with NPCs and, as a result, opening the door to yet another form of free-flowing fun. The diversity of content and features added in Horizon 3 is not limited to just the open world. It is also present in the cars that players drive around it. The size and variety of the Australian landscape is reflected in the car list, a roster of over 350 vehicles that includes everything from off-road monsters like the local Motors Rally Fighter to rare classics like the Maserati Pininfarina Berlinetta. From uniquely Aussie autos like the HSV Malou Ute to ultra modern hypercars like the Game Star, the Lamborghini Centenario. This variety, combined with the sheer size of the roster, 
ensures that for each terrain a player encounters in the Australian landscape, there are potentially dozens of vehicles up to the challenge, and with them, the opportunity for players to indulge in automotive fantasies they may have never realized they wanted before. Hopping dunes like a kangaroo in an aerial nomad wasn't on my priority list for a racing game, but after Horizon 3, it's hard for me to imagine a complete racing experience without it. Possibly the most impressive aspect of the car list is that it emphasizes quantity without compromising quality. In fact, the new features and inclusions in Horizon 3 ensure that players have a far more intimate and personal relationship with the game's 350 plus vehicles than ever before in the series. Forza Vista, an explorative feature previously unique to the motorsport series, makes its open world debut in Horizon 3, allowing Horizon players to open doors and pop open hoods on their vehicles for the very first time. In addition, a large number of these cars in the game are treated to commentary on the history of their respective manufacturers. Enzo Ferrari said that the Jaguar E-Type was the most beautiful car ever made. And Enzo knew a thing or two about good-looking cars. In combination with the ability to adjust active aerodynamics and lean into the engine bay for a closer look, this facilitates a closer relationship between the player and their garage, hammering home the sense that each car is much more than a collection of pixels and polygons. Further strengthening this connection between man and machine is the emphasis the game puts on customization. While the core paint and upgrade systems found in all Forza games goes largely unchanged, Horizon 3 builds on it in multiple ways that put greater prominence on personalization than ever before in the franchise. Along with the standard aftermarket bumpers and spoilers that are ubiquitous throughout the series, an entirely new category of visual customization, body kits, makes its franchise debut in Horizon 3. Comprised of a combination of fantasy and real-world upgrade options, the body kit system is a fantastic inclusion for multiple reasons, the most obvious of which being the increase in aesthetic alterations possible in the game. For the first time, cars that were limited to a standard stance can now quite literally spread their legs thanks to flared fenders, supercars like the Ferrari 458 Italia and the Lamborghini Aventador that were previously stuck with a few generic aero options now have an alternative way to stand out from the crowd, and cars like the Mazda RX-7 that already had a great selection of aftermarket body options now have even more possibilities to work with, some of which can drastically change a car's appearance. Along with drastic changes to appearance, body kits can also provide drastic changes to vehicle performance. Each body kit has an available preset of upgrades specifically chosen to complement the car's new aesthetic. If the player buys into the body kit preset, the car not only looks transformed, it is transformed. Cars like the Datsun 240Z evolve from basic, entry-level sports cars into nimble, high-speed tuners and vehicles like the Lexus RCF that were already high performers essentially become race cars. This in turn demonstrates the benefits of the game's upgrade system and encourages players to build their own unique setups for their vehicles, taking advantage of other new inclusions like the ability to increase the width of stock rims. Aside from upgrade specific customization, Horizon 3 also includes new options that have no impact on car performance, implemented with the sole purpose of providing a new outlet for personal expression. Similarly to Bethesda's Fallout 4, Horizon 3 allows the player to choose from a huge roster of different names that the game will use to reference and talk to the player character. This is complemented by the ability to choose from a selection of a handful of different driver avatars to represent the player, and together, these features allow players to better plant themselves into the game's world. On the automotive front, Horizon 3 includes two new personalization options players could only dream about before, first among which is the inclusion of customizable license plates. Previously limited to creating facsimiles in the game's paint feature, players in Horizon 3 can now choose to attach an actual, modeled license plate to the rear bumper of any vehicle in the game and create their own custom combination of numbers and letters for the plate. With the inclusion of actual customizable license plates, Horizon 3 acknowledges an aspect of automotive personalization limited to decal work in prior games, allowing players to quite literally put their own stamp on the cars they own in a tangible way. 
Along with the visual stamp, Horizon 3 also enables an audio stamp by allowing players to select a horn for their vehicles for the first time. Aside from a wide assortment of standard horns, players can also select from an assortment of musical horns and sound effects, providing another ample opportunity for players to select just the right sound to both reflect their personality and to properly punctuate experiences in-game. Trivial though it may seem to Horizon Outsider, to a fan of the franchise, the presence of selectable horns acts as a metaphorical cherry on top of the list of customization options in the game, a special touch that makes the entire experience that much better. Speaking personally, learning that horns would be included in the game was what ultimately sold me on Horizon 3 as an open world racing experience that I absolutely needed to play. This collection of features, from NPC convoys to personalized license plates, is spectacular on its own. But it's the core of this game that these features act in service to, the change in the relationship between the game and the player that makes Forza Horizon 3 so special. From the very beginning, Horizon 3 makes this change abundantly clear, directly communicating the shift to the player within the game itself. We have an amazing team keeping the festival running, but everything else is on you. You'll be choosing the type of racing we do, the music we play, and the star drivers we sign. This is your festival. Unlike prior games in the series, where the player takes the role of a participant in the Horizon Festival, in this game, you are the boss. On the surface, such a change may seem superficial. Instead of winning races to become the new Horizon Champion, you're winning races to grow the festival. However, beyond this significant narrative shift, the promotion to Festival Boss in Horizon 3 enables the implementation of a major shift in the gameplay experience. Along with the exhibitions, championships, and bucket list challenges made by the developers, Horizon 3 provides the player with the opportunity to make their own personalized challenges with the Horizon Blueprint. For the first time in the series, players can create new event variations of each track layout in the game, altering everything from the number of laps in the race, to the weather conditions, to the individual vehicles eligible for each event. Horizon Blueprint provides additional options for bucket list events, allowing players to select from eight different challenge types, toggle vehicle traffic, and enable restrictions like a locked camera perspective. While this new system primarily acts as a pillar of the game's Ludo narrative, ultimately, Horizon Blueprint also represents a significant leap for both the Horizon series and open world racers as a whole. The ability for players to custom tailor bucket list events, individual races, and entire championships in Forza Horizon 3 is an evolution of that most core appeal of open world racing games. Freedom. In Horizon 3, the liberation that was all too often limited to maneuvering around an open world is expanded to include the game progression system itself. Each activity the player performs in the game, from spontaneous stunt driving and free roam to completing showcase events, from finishing championships to sliding through drift zones, all feed directly into the central progression system in the game that allows players to progress with massive autonomy. Such a system is already incredibly liberating, but with the inclusion of the Horizon Blueprint, players not only have the ability to choose what they want to do in the game, but the self-determination of how they want to do it. In Forza Horizon 3, you start out as the boss of the festival, and after the character selection and tutorial are over, whether you're going into a casual cruise along the coast or a white-knuckle sprint to the finish line, you're free. At this point, it should go without saying that Horizon 3 is a fantastic game, but it should also be noted that the game isn't without its issues. Most of these issues, like the occasional pop-in of trees or how certain parts on specific vehicles cannot be painted, are petty complaints at best and ultimately inconsequential. However, there are two aspects that have a far more significant impact on the game, the most immediately apparent of which is the game's lack of a proper free play mode. While the player can freely drive around the open world without restriction, they cannot do so without having to maneuver around the many motorists and drivatars that populate the game. Generally speaking, this isn't really an issue. 
The general gameplay loop actively encourages interaction with non-player characters in the game world through convoys and the ability to challenge drive avatars to races. Even the simple act of maneuvering around motorists is an enjoyable emergent challenge. A high-speed slalom course where the cars act as cones that can change their position on the fly, and in doing so, require the player to take a more rewarding, active approach to driving. However, considering that the game does not have an established method of turning traffic and drive avatars off during free roam, it's also an experience that can grow tiring to players, especially when compounded with the fact that several heads-up display elements, like event notifications and the flashes of speed cameras, also cannot be turned off. Players can MacGyver a solution of sorts by setting up bucket list events through the blueprint mode, allowing them to drive through the game world without intrusive HUD elements and NPCs, but this solution only lasts 30 minutes before the player is booted back to free roam. Even worse, this makeshift fix isn't even possible if the player doesn't have a stable internet connection. Again, the general open world experience is superb overall. But considering how frustrating both notifications and NPCs can often be, the lack of an adjustable free play mode remains a puzzling omission from the game. The second issue, while less immediately apparent, is far more problematic. The in-game economy is, in a word, garbage. To be fair, the basic layout is decent. The player purchases cars from the auto show with credits whose value roughly corresponds to that of US dollars. A car that costs approximately $300,000 in real life would cost around 300,000 credits in the game, for example. However, while the vast majority of cars in the game can simply be bought from the auto show, there are a few dozen vehicles that are awarded to the player based upon their progression through the game. Again, there is nothing inherently wrong with this, and making vehicles a progression-based reward can certainly lead to a satisfying experience in a racing game. However, this ostensibly healthy relationship Auto Show and unlockable vehicles have with the player becomes unhealthy due to the presence of several bewildering mechanics in the game. Forza Horizon 3 brought the return of the Auction House, a long-awaited feature allowing players to buy and sell vehicles with one another online. While this is once again a great inclusion on paper, the devil is in the details, and with the addition of the Auction House, several standard features were taken away. Unlike in prior Forza games, players in Horizon 3 who don't want a certain car in their garage are unable to sell that vehicle in single player. Instead, they are only given the option to remove the car from their garage without any credit-based compensation. The only way to get compensation for an unwanted vehicle is to put it up on the auction block, often receiving far less in compensation than what players would have received selling it in previous games. When cars are unlocked, they are automatically put into the player's garage, but they are never made available for purchase from the auto show, only becoming available for purchase when and if somebody is selling theirs online. On the flip side, if a player unknowingly auctions off an unlocked vehicle and later decides they want that vehicle back in their collection, like I did, they will have to wait until another player lists theirs and either buy out the auction or hope they aren't outbid by an auction sniper at the last minute. Worse still, a few of the unlocked cars present the option for the player to remove them from the garage, creating yet another opportunity for players to accidentally delete part of their collection with no guaranteed way of getting it back. The fact that dozens of cars in the game have a kill switch, sometimes multiple kill switches, that can permanently delete them from the game is troubling on its own. But what's even worse is that the game seems like it's actively trying to trick players into activating one of these switches. For starters, with the exception of the list of barn finds present in the festival site menu, the unlocked vehicles aren't explicitly marked, making it easy for players to accidentally auction one off or unknowingly discard one from their garage. Catalyzing this unfortunate situation is the presence of the wheel spin, a slot machine that provides the player with a randomized reward when they level up in the game. While wheel spins can reward players with credits, they often reward players with vehicles, many of which are either redundant or undesirable. These wheel spin reward vehicles can easily clutter a player's collection, necessitating that the player clean out their garage by auctioning or removing unwanted cars and, as a result, facilitating a scenario where players can easily remove content from the game, potentially permanently, without even knowing it. 
I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that these cars are potentially gone forever, either. If the player removes one of these unlocked vehicles from the garage, getting lucky on the auction house is the only option given by the game to get them back. Otherwise, if the player wants to get their car back, they will either have to doctor their save file with a modding tool, or start the game all over again. To be fair, the car list itself remains vast, eclectic, and well-rounded even without these unlocked vehicles. But the possibility of permanently removing content left open within the game is still a massive design flaw. One that the developers could easily solve by making vehicles available from the auto show once they are unlocked by the player. Psst, hey. Turn 10 Studios, Playground Games, whichever one of you is listening to this, if you're listening to this, I just wanted to let you know that those things I was just talking about, those two issues, the, uh, you know, the lack of an adjustable free play mode and the fact that unlocked vehicles aren't being put in the auto show but should be put in the auto show once the player unlocks them those are two things that you could actually pretty easily fix by putting in an update that sort of rectifies the situation i'm just letting you know that sort of at the end of the game's life cycle it would be really cool if you were to implement an update or like a patch for the game that would effectively fix those problems you could still do that you know you can still fix the few flaws that are within this otherwise really superb game that I, I genuinely really do like. And, um, yeah, just letting you know that if you could do that, that would be wonderfully appreciated and beloved by the community, and not just me. Um, so yeah. Also, just FYI, um, I know this might be a little more of an issue regarding licensing and whatnot, but if you could uh, make it so all those Forzathon vehicles, you know, things like the Quartz Regalia, the Porsche Carrera GT, the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento, those cars, if you could make all those available from the auto show as well in an update, that, that'd be great. Just, just, just saying, that would be wonderful. Anyway, cheers guys, good luck with Fable. Ultimately, Forza Horizon 3 is so spectacular as a whole, from its plethora of activities to its simply breathtaking visuals, that it easily triumphs over the few problems that it has. Core elements like the skill system and the driving physics mesh beautifully with a massive collection of new features, and the ludonarrative shift in perspective revolutionizes the idea of freedom in a racing game. The game is so overflowing with spectacular new inclusions that even after trying to list all of them along with their significance, I'm still missing huge portions of the game. I haven't even discussed Horizon 3's awesome multiplayer modes, Partly because so many other channels, like Black Panther and AR12 Gaming, have already invested so much time to exploring the game's multiplayer that my addition would be redundant. But also because, ultimately, I don't need to. Even without multiplayer, even with its flaws, even after being replaced by a sequel, at the end of its four-year life cycle, Forza Horizon 3 remains quite possibly the best open-world racing game ever made. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching this video. We're sorry for the wait on new content from the channel. We've both had a lot on our plate recently as essential workers in the U.S. during the pandemic, and with some personal issues that made this video take a lot longer to upload than we originally thought. We're trying to get videos out more often, and along with hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel, becoming a patron is a fantastic way of helping us put out more content. Depending upon the tier you pick, you can do everything from getting early access to videos to voting on the next videos we make. Along with more Forza content, we plan on putting out a whole bunch of different videos, including a discussion of the things we want to see in Skate 4, and an exploration of the ludonarrative brilliance of Metro Exodus. If you have anything you want us to hear or that you want to talk about with us, feel free to put it in the comments. We love to hear them and we love to respond to them. And last but not least, thank you for visiting Dankswank, the classiest cavern on the World Wide Web.